the Bay with Invigilate running home well down the outside. Invigilate is getting to Spirit of the Bay who hung across to the rails. It's very tight. Invigilate and Spirit of the Bay in second, Valsad is only finding the one pace, back in on the inside is Nathaniel Green who's keeping on pretty gamely, Bizarre Law still the leader as they race inside the final half furlong, just idling a bit in front, being held together by Callum Hutchinson and Bizarre Law all out here to hang on and does so, from Nathaniel Green Interval still keeps going in front though as they pass the furlong pole. Time interval, the blue, white and red jacket has the advantage. Bad company in second place. Maglark is behind these as 100 large first to last in this. Time interval is still in front. Can bad company get to him? No. Time interval has made all to be bad company and Maglark. They're well now has room to operate so Tamarama with the white face Fantasy Mac in the pink cap back towards the inside is Tarsan Adelita and Prism come next but it's Tamarama who's out in the lead from Fantasy Mac and then Tarsan and Tamarama's going to do this in smooth fashion in the Oldham family colours Tamarama for Rob Hornby and Charlie Hills follow that star and down the outside spirit of the bay and spirit of the bay now comes through to narrowly take over going inside the final furlong invigilate is also running home well no room for typical woman and it's spirit of the bay who's going home strongly here spirit of the bay with invigilate running home well down the outside invigilate is getting to spirit of the bay who hung across to the rails it's very tight invigilate and spirit of the bay in second, Valsad is only finding the one pace, back in on the inside is Nathaniel Green who's keeping on pretty gamely, Bizarre Law still the leader as they race inside the final half furlong, just idling a bit in front, being held together by Callum Hutchinson and Bizarre Law all out here to hang on and does so, from Nathaniel Green Interval still keeps going in front though as they pass the furlong pole. Time interval, the blue, white and red jacket has the advantage. Bad company in second place. Maglark is behind these as 100 large first to last in this. Time interval is still in front. Can bad company get to him? No. Time interval has made all to be bad company and Maglark there well now has room to operate so Tamarama with the white face Fantasy Mac in the pink cap back towards the inside is Tarsan Adelita and Prism come next but it's Tamarama who's out in the lead from Fantasy Mac and then Tarsan and Tamarama's going to do this in smooth fashion in the Oldham family colours Tamarama for Rob Hornby and Charlie Hills follow that star and down the outside spirit of the bay and spirit of the bay now comes through to narrowly take over going inside the final furlong invigilate is also running home well no room for typical woman and it's spirit of the bay who's going home strongly here spirit of the bay with invigilate running home well down the outside invigilate is getting to spirit of the bay who hung across to the rails it's very tight invigilate and spirit of the in second, Valsad is only finding the one pace, back in on the inside is Nathaniel Green who's keeping on pretty gamely, Bizarre Law still the leader as they race inside the final half furlong, just idling a bit in front, being held together by Callum Hutchinson and Bizarre Law all out here to hang on and does so, from Nathaniel Green Interval still keeps going in front though as they pass the furlong pole. Time interval, the blue, white and red jacket has the advantage. Bad company in second place. Maglark is behind these as 100 large first to last in this. Time interval is still in front. Can bad company get to him? No. Time interval has made all to be bad company and Maglark there well now has room to operate so Tamarama with the white face Fantasy Mac in the pink cap back towards the inside is Tarsan Adelita and Prism come next but it's Tamarama who's out in the lead from Fantasy Mac and then Tarsan and Tamarama's going to do this in smooth fashion in the Oldham family colours Tamarama for Rob Hornby and Charlie Hills follow that star and down the outside spirit of the bay and spirit of the bay now comes through to narrowly take over going inside the final furlong invigilate is also running home well no room for typical woman and it's spirit of the bay who's going home strongly here spirit of the bay with invigilate running home well down the outside invigilate is getting to spirit of the bay who hung across to the rails it's very tight invigilate and spirit of the bay. 
Lasseter in second. Valsad is only finding the one pace. Back in on the inside is Nathaniel Green, who's keeping on pretty gamely. Bizarre Law still the leader as they race inside the final half furlong, just idling a bit in front, being held together by Callum Hutchinson. And Bizarre Law all out here to hang on and does so. From Nathaniel Green. Lengthy. Yeah, he, he did, and I, I got the impression he wasn't in love with the, the ground conditions really that day. It was it was pretty murky conditions, not a nice day. Ground was very soft, and he ran okay. He ran fine, sort of plugging away in behind them, but without really ever threatening time interval and bad company on that occasion. Now I'd say it was a it was a better race than this as well. It was a higher grade. It was a, a not to a hundred. He's down into an eighty five again today. No doubt connections of Mark Lark will be hoping that over the course of this season he can really progress into those better quality handicaps again. It's still early days with him. Four career runs, two wins, um, steady improvement. Even even last time out was probably an improvement on on his um, efforts in novice company given that it was a big step up in class from, from those trying a handicap for the first time and today should teach us a lot more but I would say given the pedigree, the profile and um, the way that he progressed last year they'll be hoping that this is a horse that can go on and progress into those really good high value middle distance handicaps as we work away in the summer and maybe even some races here back at Haydock later on in the season OK, my second in is Tamarama, who are you happy to blame the ground on stable I, debut? I, I was, yeah. I mean, it was the first time she'd encountered softer than uh, softer than good, and it was it was really testing at Windsor in in early May. Um, I don't think the conditions helped her at all. I also thought she was probably ridden a little bit handier than she wants to be. She, her best form has tended to come when she's been well covered up behind horses and she over-raced a little bit without seeing a bit too much daylight at Windsor. I thought there were a few reasons to excuse that performance. I think she's a lot better than that. I loved the way that she won on her first try at this trip at Chelmsford at the end of last season. I think she is dangerous. I, I, I like her chance today. I think that these are her conditions and... I think she's actually got the best form if you go back to last year with that Chelmsford performance and, and some of her other efforts were good in defeat as well. The new market race that she finished third in behind Al Husson, that, that proved to be quite a strong piece of form as well. So I give her a good chance. I, I suppose my worry would be maybe if she's going to revert to hold-up tactics, the pace might not be that strong in this race and that could work against her. OK. Um, Thunder Max was well held last time out at um, Chester. In, in first time out blinkers he, he won a maiden at Doncaster mm. and you thought he was really going to kick on but he's down now the handicapper's cut a bit of slack three pound for that last run yeah he did he, he, he won as, at Donny as a two year old he looked like a, a horse that would, would have a really bright future but he hasn't managed a win since then 77 underestimates his ability I suppose the fact that blinkers are on is just a, a minor concern but ground conditions again for him an excuse I think at Chester last time that could be the theme for the next mm. A week or so when its ground dries out. Um, OK, we'll find out uh, what's going to win this opening contest if Fibber goes into stall five. Anthony Ennis is going to call them home for us today. Let's get up and say good afternoon to him. Cheers, Mark. Good afternoon. Runners are just about ready to go. And they're off. Jumped away for our first, the Tilsley Handicap Stakes over the mile and two furlong distance. Spirit of the Bay was the slowest away. One of the first to show up is Noble Anthem in the beige and dark blue colours. The lead up here with the navy blue jacket on the inside. That's Bizarre Law with the light coloured sleeves. And now advancing is Thunder Max, who's towards the inside. The ammo racing colours, the purple. And Thunder Max is now just nosing on ahead of Noble Anthem around the turn. They're followed in third place then by Bizarre Law with Maglark, who's racing one out, one back on the outside in the blue and white colours. Two lengths back to find Rogue Rocket, the red and white, who's on the inside of Tamarama. And towards the back is Spirit of the Bay, who's racing in the pink and black Diabolo with the white cap, the early bat marker under Richard Kingscote. They advance well down the far side, heading for the final three quarters of a mile in the Tildesley handicap. And the leader on the inside is narrowly Thunder Max. Two in second place, Noble Anthem under Ben Curtis. These two are ahead of in third, Bizarre Law, who's racing on the inside of Maglark, the market leader, who's in a good position, racing in fourth in the hands of Dane O'Neill. 
Fifth place on the inside, the nose-banded Rogue Rocket in the red. Then comes Tamarama, who's being held up, green and pink colours on the outside and towards the back of the field still a Spirit of the Bay who will have to pass them all, turning into the home straight with half a mile left to travel. The leader is still Thunder Max on the inside in the hands of Benoit de la Sayette. Leads by three parts to, in second place, Noble Anthem. Behind them in third is Bizarre Law. Maglark is poised in fourth place. On the inside is Rogue Rocket, just nudged along from Tamarama with her white face and still no move from Spirit of the Bay, but is in touch as they pass the three furlong from home marker. Still quite a few chances. Thunder Max against the rails. To the outside, shaken up now is Noble Anthem. In behind them against the running rail, Bizarre Law looking for room. Maglark has got daylight if good enough. Tamarama's getting much closer now as well and Spirit of the Bay is going to challenge on the wide outside. Has a chance too. Down for the final furlong. It's Spirit of the Bay on the outside of Tamarama and Spirit of the Bay has quickened up smartly here for Richard Kingscote and she's going on. Maglark is trying to give chase in second place but Spirit of the Bay has a length in hand. Entering the final 100 yards, it's Spirit of the Bay. Driven out here in front, Spirit of the Bay goes on to win. For Clive Cox and Richard Kingscote, Maglark second, third, maybe just under Max. Tight for fourth, Bizarre Law and Tamarama. Yeah, good start of the day for... At Clive Cox and Richard Kingscote. Uh, this daughter of Cable Bay has sprinted clear. And we've got, obviously, a get ahead in her feature, uh, Cecil Frill at 3.15. She's won nicely from Maglack in second place for Charlie Hills and Dan O'Neill. And Thunder Max was third for uh, Richard Hannon and Benoit de Sedet claiming three. Yeah, and she's taken advantage of that reduced handicap mark. She ran a couple of Good races uh, at the height of summer last year, Spirit of the Bay. Then just form tailed off a little bit, but Handicap has given her a chance as a result of that. A couple of lesser efforts coming back this season, but I think stepping back up in trip has, has definitely helped her. Her previous winning had all come over a mile, but nowadays this trip seems to suit her better. Her best two runs last year were over um, a mile and a quarter at Doncaster and nine furlongs at Sandown, and she's back to those levels, if not higher, again this afternoon to win for the first time since that productive year that she had in 2021 as a three-year-old when she really progressed. She didn't manage to get her head in front last season, but patient ride from Richard Kingscote pulled her out for a clear run down the outside, and she's really quickened well all the way to the line. It'll be a good day for, for Richard to get ahead. Susanna looks to a top chance, according to the betting. Wardaker Gomez wouldn't be without a chance as well. Yeah, no, he's got a good book of rides, hasn't he, um, through the course of, of the afternoon. So this might not be the first time that we see see Richard riding one uh, into coming into the winner's enclosure. I got the impression that Maglark just couldn't quite quicken in the same way that Spirit of the Bay did, and he might just be ready for an even longer trip now. He won over a mile and a quarter last year on good to soft ground, softish ground at, at Goodwood. He just doesn't do anything too quickly, does he? And you mentioned before, Niall, and the mare is uh, Ganati. She's produced horses that have won over uh, up to a mile and a half, but also some sprint horses as well. And I think Maglark looks sort of more of the staying type, doesn't he? Like yeah. a lot of the Muharras are. And wouldn't be surprised to see him up to a mile and a half and finding a little bit more improvement as the season goes on. But Spirit of the Bay, who's won her opening contest, has tied up the full result. There's no winner coming back in. Richard King gets on board. She had a, a, a turn of pace down the, the middle of the track to get to uh, Maglock. Maglock traded at 1.4 in running on uh, Betfair, but to beaten 17 to 2, the winner. 11 to 10, favourite second.
the spirit of the Bears water opening contest. Richard Kingsfield back at one of your local hunting grounds. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Cox gave me a nice bit of confidence about her this morning, and um, you know she she done everything nicely. What's the ground like? 